And Noah Lynn Van Leuven's second final means that she beats Lorraine Wynn Stanley to the spot for the last spot of the match play. And uh, what do you make of that field of eight for Blackpool? Well, I think at the end, we have pretty much the right field. And, we, you know, we talked about it. Uh, well, Alex and I talked about last week, where if you look at the averages, and again, I talked a lot about averages on the last question, and averages aren't everything. But over the course of a season, the average average does do a good job of indicating where someone's game is. A one match average, not that important. A seasonal average, very, mu- very important in seeing the standard. And if you look at the eight people who qualify, and if you take out the people who didn't play all three weekends this year, some of them might have missed some weekends last year. Bo Greaves, of course, only played a quarter of the season and won almost everything. But if you just look at the people who played every weekend this year, the eight people who qualified are the eight highest averages that played all 12 events. And the next two were the next two left out. So we end up with the players who are playing the best. The eight players over 73 average who played all the weekends are here. Noah Lynn Van Leuven's the only one who snuck in at the end, but she's also playing her best darts right now. She made a final in the last event last weekend, her first final in the women's series, and and gave uh, Makuru Suzuki a very good run for her money. She had led the match early on, but in the end, uh, Makuru was just too much for her. This time around, she made a second final. She had no chance in that final, but that was not her fault. Bo Greaves averaged 104 and change in winning that match five legs to nil. Noah Lynn's game is not anywhere yet near the level to contend when Bo Greaves is playing at, well, what we now almost expect Bo Greaves to do uh, from time to time. Overall, it was another really good weekend, and she kept getting results, and she put together that run to the final right at the same time. You know, beating uh, Rihanna O'Sullivan in the quarterfinals with all the pressure, knowing that she needed that win to get there, to go and beat one of the uh, better players and one of the people who will also be in this event um, in that match. I think we now end up as a result with a better field than we did last year because one, the players knew from the event last year that they had 12 months to prepare and get ready for this as opposed to last year where it kind of sprung on. So the players now had something to aim for and a reason to go and play these tournaments and that carrot has been there the entire time and they've pushed and lifted one another. But beyond that, I just think the depth of the game is so much stronger. And now that we are, I mean, obviously COVID still exists, but we're not feeling the scheduling effects like we had in the past. And now players are playing not just these, but other tournaments and are playing pretty much full schedules. The players are almost all improved. I think the only player in this field who I think right now is weaker than she was a year ago. Ashton. There's obviously something struggling with Lisa Ashton's game. She still is one of the best players in the world. She still is at least one of the eight best uh, players in the women's series, and that's why she's here. It's why she's fourth in averages this year. But she's the only player who's made a clear regression from a year ago. Uh, Noah Lynn obviously has upped her game. Robin Byrne has upped her game. Uh, Rihanna O'Sullivan uh, was one of the surprise packages last year. She's become much more consistent this year. Alinda Graf, probably playing similar to she was last year, but again, more consistent as she's played more of these. And obviously, you know, we talked about Fallon on the last question, but beyond that, we've seen the emergence of Poker East, and Makura Suzuki has, now that she's been coming to all of these weekends, really shown that she is the second or third best player in women's starts. I think we've ended up with a much stronger field than we did last year. And uh, we haven't seen what's going to happen in the next 12 months, but I can already say this field is going to be much weaker than the field will be from 12 months from now. The game and keeps improving. These players keep lifting one another up. Yes, Bogries may have regressed a little bit in the last couple months from where she was when she first um, appeared, uh, but not by much. It's more people have caught up to her or are trying to catch up to her because they have to. And as they improve, as McCrew in, improves her game as she reaches her A game more often. As Fallon Sherrick begins to get back to where she was a couple years ago, it's forcing all those other people to also lift their games. I'm really excited to see how this field plays out. It's so much stronger than it was last year. Um, it's more wide open than it might seem, even though Bo Greaves is and should be the heavy favorite. Um, but I also think it's uh, a weaker field than it will be a year from now because, well, the game just keeps getting tougher.
Yeah, I agree with that. I think one of the examples of a player being really strong and then lifting somebody else's game to levels that they didn't know they had in them was in one of the women's series last year, uh, Lisa Ashton was playing Kirsty Hutchinson, and Kirsty Hutchinson brought a 90-plus average against Lisa. She still lost, but when I spoke to Kirsty afterwards, she said, I didn't know I had a 90-plus average anywhere in my game. Of course, Lisa couldn't bloody let me win that one, but the fact was, was with Lisa having her game and having come off of having her tour card and having her at the top of her game and having Fallon, you know, when she was on her day at the top of her game was driving the people who are playing them to produce better numbers just across the board, not just the eight that made the match play, but across the board. But now that you've had Makuru come over for all of them and you've had Bo enter, those have brought the numbers up as well because yes, Bo is miles ahead of everybody in terms of the ranking money but that's not to say that she's impossible to beat whether that be in the women's series or other place i mean she was playing in a bdo tournament and now modena gosh i cannot remember her surname last from spain um absolutely crushed her absolutely crushed her and it was just you know shocking but Bo pushes people in a way that they have to find their best. And when that happens, you may not even know that your best is in the 90s, but sometimes that's where you get pushed to. And so I don't think that we have anybody that shouldn't have qualified for this. I think this is closer to what we may have expected last year. If you had started at the beginning of the year and said, give me your eight best women's players, regardless of who had signed up. Of course, it was who had signed up. So without Bo being there, uh, Lisa and Fallon would be definitely in your field. I think other players, more like Katie Sheldon, who's still very talented and wasn't too far outside of the eight, and it was going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, I mean, Rain just outside, so she's still playing a really strong game. Brianna Griffiths had a bit of a falter this year where they've stopped making her darts, so she's adjusting to new darts and things like that. But this is definitely, I feel, more if you had sat people down and said, give me your field of eight, this is closer to what you would have expected last year. And so the fact that these people have carried on with their games into next year, maybe Robin Burns a bit of, of a surprise, not because she's not quality, but maybe she wasn't you know, expected based on previous world championships or anything along those lines. But I do think that that is what makes it exciting, that we have a field of eight, that there are five different people than there were last year. And like you said, that the quality and standard can only go up because more and more people are attending these events. People are getting used to these formats. People are getting used to how these things are laid out. People are finding new levels as they approach things. Uh, Rian versus Makuru. Uh, in Milton Keynes, we had 102 or 103 average in that. I mean, it's only it's only on its way up. And having the involvement of as many players as humanly possible from all different parts of the game and from all over the world who have all these different A, B, C games that they throw out at different times will make it to the point where a 70 average won't be enough. Right now, a 70 average will get you through but I would say last year, 60s could get you through. So I think as it goes, we're going to find more and more women reaching 80s and 90s. And eventually, once they reach 80s and 90s, just like the men reaching 90s and 100 plus, I think they're going to kind of catch up with each other. And I think that'll be really fun to see because then that'll produce exciting things for the world championships where they have those two women's spots. So I think the right field is there. I'm very excited. I'm very glad I paid a metric ton to ensure that I will be in Blackpool. And I cannot wait to bring whatever interviews I can from that weekend. 